So then coming up next to the Pachacacha stage is a theater and filmmaker and content specialist at the Calgary International Film Festival. He is a native Calgarian who owns 2150 Creative. He is also a beach volleyball enthusiast and most importantly, a cat dad to Wiley. Please put your hands together for my friend, Matt McKinney. Hello. If you're like me, at the end of a long day or the turning over of another year in your life, you might celebrate with a drink. So in honor of all those little endings in our lives, I thought we'd play a drinking game. <laughs> if you'd like to join, whether you have water or wine, beer or liquor, every time I say closure, we drink. <laughs> I have this idea for a reality television show that places couples who have broken up at least twice onto an island with other couples who have done the same. Don't ask me why I thought of this idea. <laughs> and through a series of challenges, we see if they decide to get back together or find new love. I call it closer or closure. <laughs> uh, why is this one lady's leg a little weird? Well, as an experiment, I tried to create all of my images with AI, so... <laughs> some of them are weird. Don't try and think too hard about it. And while I'll be talking a lot about closure within relationships, by all means, replace it with whatever it is that you feel like you're orbiting. Personally, I'm terrible at closure. I'm actually looking forward to listening to what everybody has to say tonight and taking some serious notes. I'm sure my ex-girlfriend will appreciate it. She thought it was hilarious that I was going to be speaking up here tonight, to which I said, OK, how about we focus on my strengths here? What's the opposite of closure? Maybe I'm just really good at that. To which she said, beating a dead horse. <laughs> But I've seen enough zombie movies to know that sometimes that old horse ain't dead. <laughs> Number two rule of Zombieland, don't be stingy with your bullets. Take another shot, also known as the double tap. In my case, the triple tap. In fact, well, for all of you sitting in the, sitting in the audience right now thinking about your ex, to you I say, go for it. I probably will. <laughs> that whole thing about third time's the charm, they were wrong. It's the fourth time. Fourth time's a charm. <laughs> Among the many good reads at the schooloflife.com, one of them talks about the autumn crush, in which they go on to say that although, auto, although crushes are almost universally associated with the very start of love, in reality, they can unfold just as intensely at love's near end point. During our late crush, we're rediscovering what was nice about someone without any of the expectations on them that existed while we were in the relationship. As if love wasn't complicated enough. And I'm sure, as many of you know, I'm not here to tell you how to get over your ex. And, well, what I want to do is shed some light on how to stay sane while you're in the nebulous gray area when your relationship status develops the it's complicated moniker. Because with the right filter, those gray areas can teach us a lot. I'm going to throw out a hypothesis that those of us who struggle with closure are also indecisive overthinkers who struggle to fall asleep at night. We're the folks who still have all our grade three homework tucked away in a box. But to describe us another way, if lesbians have claimed U-hauling, the indecisives have claimed U-turning. <laughs> Needless to say, it can be exhausting to live without closure. To endlessly revisit the decisions you've made, the people no longer in your life, the silly things you said or wish you didn't say, even our triumphs and moments of glory, we can get attached to those too. Living without closure is constantly living with the question, what if? But do not fear my indecisive, overtired comrades. We aren't alone in our what ifery. There's another group of people that really like what ifs. Those people are scientists. So we're basically scientists. <laughs> Hypothesizing, doing experiments, drawing conclusions, not trusting those conclusions, experimenting again. As any serial monogamist will tell you, it can be difficult to move on from something to nothing. Their tendency to fill that void as quickly as possible is a natural one. We're going to give those folks a break tonight, though, and talk about, us who, talk about those of us who need to work on the ending part. The important part to remember is awareness comes choice. So let's look to science for a little inspiration. Let's imagine you're this tiny ball, and the larger ball is the one you're seeking closure from. <laughs> um, needless to say, sorry, I just lost my place here. Say closure, everybody drink. <laughs> 
Um, so much like how light cannot escape a black hole, it can sometimes be difficult to see outside that person's gravitational pull. That boundary is known as the event horizon. Is there someone with a passion for cooking and a killer body lurking just outside that event horizon? There's only one way to find out, and that's by escaping this ball's gravitational pull. So how might we do that? Well, method number one is energy equals mass. So the hard part about the scenario we're in is that the more we think about the ball, the more energy we give it, and the larger it grows. So method number one is stop fucking thinking about the ball. <laughs> now, there's a bunch of unhealthy ways to do this, but the simple and much cheaper method is meditation. Meditation aims to improve your ability to recognize thoughts and feelings as they materialize in your fabric of space. Instead of getting caught up in rumination, you'll acknowledge them with a and then send them packing just as easy. But remember, nature abhors a vacuum, so you might find some new activities to put your focus on. The serial monogamists probably have some ideas here, but pickleball works too. <laughs> now for a commercial break. Closure takes work, people, so we need to stay hydrated. <laughs> Those eight cups of water a day are also gonna keep you looking young. And while you're at it, eat a carrot. That beta carotene, derived from the Latin word for carrot, is gonna keep you sharp. Water keeps you young, carrots keep you sharp. Okay, back to the method at parts. <laughs> this alternate method is to equal the playing field by increasing your own mass. We'll do this by taking on fresh data. Track your thoughts for a day or a week and see what it tells you. If you're orbiting something, there might be some unanswered questions keeping you tethered there. Start filling in those information gaps. Rilke famously refers to this as living the questions. Be patient toward all that is unsolved in your heart and try to love the questions themselves. If navigating your inner psyche is more enjoyable to you as a team sport, feel free to involve a therapist at this point. <laughs> Whether solo or as a team, simply taking on fresh data and therefore more mass and energy will give you the perspective and confidence you need to make a move. Maybe it will bring you closer, or maybe it will bring you closure. But make sure you're a good scientist and record what you find. That way, three months down the road, when you find yourself succumbing to the gravity of some toasty-looking sun, you can remind yourself of those answers. Stay hydrated, stay sharp, and may the forces be with you. <laughs>